today we're going to talk in this section for a third part of fractions, specifically about multiplication and division. And to be honest, way easier than the stuff we've done so far. Let me get the lights. So here's what we looked at last time. Last time, I think, is the hardest part of this unit. In the last time I presented this to you guys, I showed you that in order to add or subtract two fractions, you need to know about this thing called the common denominator, which means the same bottom number. Without that, you can't do it. So I gave you a method to subtract or add two fractions, get a common denominator. If you have one, move down to step two. But if you don't have a common denominator, the process was to multiply, use that value as a new common denominator, multiply each numerator, and write it in. I'm not going to go through it again. We already did that last time. Then add or subtract the two numerators, and you're done. You have your answer over that thing called the common denominator. So this is what I presented to you guys last time. You had a worksheet to work on it, and it was looking like it was working for a lot of you. You're starting to connect with that. So today I want to talk about multiplication and division. It's honestly way easier to do this. Even though it would seem like it's not, it actually is. So here's where we are so far. You hopefully now understand what a fraction is. You know a process to simplify a fraction or make it into simpler numbers. That also allows you to compare fractions, to check to see if one fraction and the other are the same. And this is, again, that idea of the common denominator, which leads into adding or subtracting. So today, multiplication and division is a lot easier. Okay? Now, I don't think you need this, but let's just remember that what multiplication actually is, is just shorthand for lots of adding. That's what multiplication is. It's the mathematician's lazy way of adding something over and over again. Okay? So when you see 2 times 3, it just means you take a group of two items, okay? And then you have three groups of those two items. Three groups of two, right, is three times two, which is six, right? There's, you've probably seen this before, especially in your elementary education. Lots of different ways to understand what multiplication is. But we're moving away from the pictures, okay? And you're not going to see these in the grade nine math course or the grade 10 math courses. You're moving to symbolic representation, using symbols. And what you're also going to find is you're going to move away from even using this symbol. The, that little x to represent times or multiplication, that's not going to show up that much anymore. Phoenix. It can, be a dot. it can be a dot. That's an example of something else it can move towards. Okay? Division is the reverse of multiplication, just like subtraction is the reverse of addition. So what you have here is you have a group of eight items, and when you divide something, you are separating it into groups again. So I'm dividing those eight items into four groups of two. Or in other words, eight divided by two is four. It's just using the symbols to represent that. This is not revolutionary math. You guys should know this. And when I tested you in your diagnostic, you showed you did know this. So I'm moving on. As I've said before, even the division symbol itself, if you look at that symbol, it looks like a fraction, where this dot and that dot could be a number. So division and fractions are essentially the same thing. Okay, so let's work on a method now. How do I multiply two fractions? Okay, it's really simple. We don't need to do anything like a common denominator. With multiplication, it's simply as simple as you can do it. You multiply the two numerators, the two top numbers, you multiply the two denominators, and you're done. Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to say what's 2 over 5 times 3 over 4? You just straight up multiply the two top numbers. So you multiply 2 times 3. Then you straight up multiply the two bottom numbers, 5 times 4. And your answer is done. It's 6 over 20. It's much simpler than the whole common denominator thing. So multiplication is, in my opinion, the easiest thing you can do with fractions. Now. From here, this fraction could be made simpler. You could think of simpler numbers. I'm not going to do that today. We did that in part one. So if you're not sure how to simplify or make a fraction simpler, go back to, to part one and you can see how to do it. Or if you're using my little booklet that I'm preparing for you guys, it's in there how to do that. Okay. Okay. Let's try another one. Simple fractions, one half times three quarters. So just multiply the two top numbers, one times three, and the bottom numbers, two times four and we're done. So it's simple. 
Could not be, I think, easier for you guys to figure that system out, okay? Now, we'll move on. How to divide. Believe it or not, dividing is almost as simple. It has just one extra step. However, that step is what my wife often likes to call counterintuitive, which means it doesn't make sense that it works. Why does it work that way? For some of you, don't worry about that part. Just accept that it does, okay? I can give you a long, detailed explanation as to why we do it this way, but the reality is, I think for you guys, you just need to know how to do it, not so much as to why we do it. Here's how you divide two fractions. The only step that's different is step one, you flip the second fraction. Or sometimes you use the word inverse, okay? Sometimes there's an even fancier word that math teachers will use called the reciprocal, okay? Which just basically means the bottom number becomes the top number and the top number becomes the bottom number, which is essentially to flip it. And then you multiply, which we just talked about, and that's it. So then you multiply the two numerators and the two denominators after this one's been flipped. So let's give it a shot. Yes? Yeah, that's, uh, I don't want to confuse everyone by that, but yeah, there's a, there's a point to be made with that. So let's just go with the method. If you see this, 2 over 3 divided by 3 over 4, the process is the steps I just said. Step 1, flip that fraction. So 3 over 4 flips to become 4 over 3, okay? So you flip the second fraction. Now, you do a multiplication. So now the original fraction just moves down, and you turn your division into multiplication. And now you just straight up multiply 2 times 4, and you straight up multiply 3 times 3, you get 8 over 9, and you're done. So division is also extremely simple. It just has that one extra step, and then it becomes multiplication. Super easy, I think. This is going to be an easy one for you guys. Let's try one more. Okay? 2 over 5 and 1 over 2. Now I'm going to do this one also on the smart board just for fun, okay? So 1 over 2 divided by, is it 3 over 4? I can't remember, okay? So here's how you would approach this on a worksheet. You would take the first step of taking that second fraction and flipping it. So it becomes 4 over 3. So the bottom number goes to the top and the top number goes to the bottom. You flip. This fraction stays the same. And then your division turns into multiplication. And now, you straight up multiply. 1 times 4 equals 4. And 2 times 3 equals 6. So your final answer is 4 over 6. And you're done. Okay? So it's not hard. Okay? You can see me doing it live is not that tricky in terms of the way it works. Okay? Flip the second fraction. Sorry, these are different fractions than the one I just did. Uh, multiply them, and you're done. That's it. Let's summarize. So all I want you to get out of today is the following method. In terms of language, there's only one new word you need to know for this part, and that is that idea to inverse or flip a fraction. Okay, that's what it means. Your method is to multiply the two numerators, multiply the two, de two denominators when doing multiplication. When doing division, inverse the second fraction, or flip it, and then multiply the two fractions. And if you don't know how to multiply, just look right here. So it's a very simple set of steps for dealing with that. Okay? Is there any questions about this?